La 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 la. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the third little guide session. Thank you to that guy in the bush too for the suggestion. Today, I will answer again a lot of questions that you are asked in my community post tab. Community post tab? Community tab post, my goodness. Great start. Again, thank you for over 350 questions. Today I will try to answer more than usual in a shorter time. But before we get into that, since this kind of video is mostly watched by my most regular viewers, thank you by the way for sticking with me, I want to announce something hopefully cool. I just released my Patreon page. Yay! I tried to include many awesome perks, like exclusive updates, votes on future video topics, exclusive Patreon Q&As, early access to the videos, one we once against me, and for the highest tier, direct contact where you can ask me anything regarding ML, access to my scripts, and exclusive MLG Patreon merchandise. If any of this sounds interesting to you, head over there and become a Patreon today. Also, make sure to check out my first goal. I'm serious about it. Now that you're hopefully back, let's start with the first question. And it's from Crook. And it's actually two questions. The first one is, what do you think about tank jungle meta? Is it too much? I don't think it's too much. A changing meta keeps things interesting in my opinion. And if you're able to play the jungle role well with a tank, why not? Although, there are not that many tanks you can actually play really effective in the jungle. So I personally wouldn't call it the tank jungle meta. That would mean for me that tanks are better than any other role as jungler. Which is not the case. The only tanks you can really play effective as a jungler are Barretts, Basha, Uranus and maybe Hylos. And the second question is, what do you think about the upcoming buffs and nerfs? This I can only answer once it's implemented on the official server. When there are changes made on the advanced server, it doesn't mean that they actually implemented like this on the official server. I don't remember anymore what it was exactly. But in one video I was saying there's going to be a change and two days later they completely scrapped that. So the only update that really matters is the, is the official server update. I was actually thinking before about making a video once there's an update on the official server talking about the changes and stuff. But then I thought, there are many other ML YouTubers who do it. And some do it really good. So I don't need to say the same thing as they are going to say. I just don't want to do the exact same content as anyone else. Next we have the question from Nick. Why is Moonton and ML communities not paying much more attention to hero drafts? Keeping 5 man queues aside, winning the draft is priority to victory. If you ask the reason why average players can't stand a chance against pro players, when all are aware of hero mechanics, rotation etc, draft is a difference maker. What's your opinion about it? Well, to draft properly, you need to have some knowledge about every hero in the game. And also which heroes work together well and which doesn't. Apart from the obvious Johnson or Dead or Bane combos. For the average player, that mountain is just too high to climb. Because it requires to actively because that would require to actively search for to actively to actively search for game knowledge outside of the game. And as I said in my last Q&A video, Moonton is not doing a good job teaching their players how to properly play the game. I mean, how could you learn which hero counters which one inside of the game? The only way you can learn this is through the hard way. Is through the hard way when you're getting destroyed by your counter and learn that you shouldn't pick your hero against that counter. Otherwise, you basically gave yourself the answer to your question already. The average player is not willing to put work into becoming better because they just want to play the game. Top players are doing this work and are aware how to draft brick properly, which is why they beat the average player easily. There are also many other factors to the victory, but draft pick is one of the most important, which is why I make a whole video dedicated to that topic for the rank up guide series. Next, we have the question from Human Zombie. For the comments with multiple questions, I will make a quick fire from now on. What means, I will just go quickly through them. Did you agree that matchmaking balance in MLBB needs to be reworked? Yes I do, and I talked already about it in my first Q&A video and the things must be changed video. Check them out if you want to hear my detailed explanation. What heroes do you think need a revamp? Again, I already talked about it in my first Q&A video. The heroes who are the least popular, because their mechanics are not fitting the current meta anymore. Also, they shouldn't fix things that are not broken. Do you think Moonta will make a special queue for toxic and AFK players? I think they should rather make a queue for players who have a credit score of 110. But I don't see that they will implement that. Next we have Lipi Muniz. 
Taking two extremely unbalanced hero into comparison, what would you do to nerf Paquito? And what would you do to buff Teresla? You can compare other heroes if you want. Well, regarding Paquito, I see two ways how you could nerf him, without ruining him completely like other certain heroes. Either you nerf his damage, or you limit his spell vamp similar to Lancelot, what would make him less tanky. The nerf where they increase the cooldown of his ult is laughable at best in my opinion. Luckily they changed it on the advanced server already. About how to buff Teresla, I would suggest to make him faster and change the way his second skill works. In the laning phase, he is really strong against any other immobile hero right now. But once he is up against heroes with long range attacks, mobile heroes or heroes who can interrupt his second skill, it becomes really difficult for him. You could also lower for example the damage from his second skill, but make him immune to CC skills while he is casting a skill. Or you increase the animation speed for example. You could also remove that he basically stops moving forward while using his second skill or increase the jump distance from his ult to be able to reach long range heroes. I see many ways how you could buff him. Or you revamp him and change some of his skills completely that match his other skills. I think the heroes who are the least pick should get some more love because if they would be a viable option people would start to play them. Next we have... Uh, yes with the question. Do you think it's time Munta needs to rework the physical emblem and magic emblem? If so, how should it be? I think the whole emblem system needs to be reworked. For the common emblems I think they should be reworked in a way that new players don't need to care too much about emblems in the beginning, but learn how they are supposed to work. Like until you've reached a certain rank, you have only the physical and magic emblem available, like it is now already. At the max level though, you can rework them in a way that the physical emblems work well with any physical damage heroes and the magic emblem works on any magic damage heroes. You could also implement it as a tutorial step where players learn which talent their heroes need, so players understand easily how they should use them. Once a player reaches a certain rank, let's say master or grandmaster for example, they get access to the custom emblems on the max level as well and the physical and magic emblem disappears. The grind to the max emblem should be removed completely in my opinion. Since you can't even spend diamonds to level up your emblem fast, I really don't understand the purpose of this. <coughs> Got my voice lost. <coughs> I really don't understand the purpose of the system anyway. Next, we have Lazy Dave. If you could just straight up remove one thing from ML, what would it be? Saying the emblem system would be boring, isn't it? But right now, I can't think of a particular thing I want to be removed. I have many things I would like to add or to change, but removing something is really difficult. The next questions are from Khalil Anur26. Again, I will make a quick fire. Do you agree if Moonton give the option to not recommend potions? Because sometimes I do not purposely buy it because I want to change my build in game. I wouldn't complain if there would be an option, so why not? Make a painted battle spell, but only cost like 20 to 50 diamonds. I mean, if there would be some who would buy it, I would not be against it. But I wouldn't be one of them to be honest. Make a new card mode called Original featuring the first version of the old heroes for old players. I think it would be also interesting for newer players who didn't start to play in 2016. I would love to play the first version of Mobile Legend, but I don't see that Munta will actually put the effort into making that mode happen. The next question is from Sparrow. What is your favorite collector skin so far and why is it Harley's collector skin? Sorry, but it's actually not Harley's collector skin. It's actually Badang's collector skin. When it first came out, I instantly bought it because at that time he was my most played hero and I loved the skin so much and still does. Sadly, he can be only used situational at best right now. Enter sad noises. Next we have Art Yum. Is the game getting boring or is it just me who got enough of it? Is there a way to restore the fun I used to have when I started playing a year ago? I can basically enter the first reply from Draziken to answer this question. Whenever you're having fun with something, it will start to get boring after a while. When you want to restore the fun, Try out something new. Play with friends. You can find plenty of nice players on my Discord server for example. Try out new heroes. Go full berserk and try to reach the highest rank you can. Or if you're like me, start to make content about it on YouTube and invest more time into it than ever before. Next we have Shrugi Gaming. When watching YouTube, most contents are made in high elo and played with high elo strategies. Would you recommend the viewers to follow the content creators and their strategies even though the viewers are low elo? When I was new to ML and watched videos about how to become better, I noticed pretty fast that some things you can't convert exactly into your playstyle, simply because your low elo teammates do completely different things 
than the high elo teammates do. The mistakes that were shown in the video were nothing compared to what players in lower ranks do. But in general, you can take any strategy or advice, even when it's meant for high elo, as long as it not requires any help from your teammates. A good jungle rotation is a good jungle rotation. No matter if you use it in mythical glory or epical glory. Although for my videos I always try to keep in mind that almost all of my viewers are in between epic to low mythic rank. So all of my tips are targeted for those players. This is the reason why my general tip videos have always stated that they are tips to rank up and not how to become top global 1 player. Next we have Renando de la Pina. How do you prevent lose streaks? Well, there's not really a formula to prevent it. If you play solo it can happen that you lose a couple of matches in a row. One thing that I can recommend you is if you just lost a match and you feel extremely angry or tired... Angry? Angry. Stop playing rank. Play another mode where it doesn't really matter if you win or lose or just turn off the game completely and do something else. Playing rank while you're tilted or tired is the worst thing you can do. And this can cause a lose streak. And what can you do if the enemy picks a counter to the hero you're playing? Well, when your counter is in a 1v1 against you on the lane, try to convince your ally to lane swap or play very cautious. Try to prevent to give your enemy any chance to use your weaknesses. When you play against your counter, it's not necessary that you win your lane. Just make sure to not lose it. Once the ganks start, you can focus on anyone else and your teammates can take care of your counter. A few weeks ago, I was playing on the side with Ruby against a Sun player and he non-stop attacked me with his clones. This was like heaven for me because I could regen my whole HP with just one skill and completely destroyed him. If he would just play passive and try to farm the minions, he wouldn't have a 3000 gold difference to me and being completely underfarmed. Play smart is the keyword here. Last, let's finish with two personal questions. The first one is from Notice Me Guide Senpai. Lol. How did you meet your wife? I actually met her online. I saw a picture of her and let my unbelievable charm play. He just wrote me, how you doing? As I said, my unbelievable charm. If there's anyone who is old enough to know the series Friends, it really works. Before we got married, I visited her a couple of times in the Philippines and then she came here to Germany. Was she already a Mobile Legends player before she married you or after? She was actually the one who introduced me to the game. So this YouTube channel is existing purely thanks to her. What is her favorite hero and role? Well, she likes the mage role the most and her mains are Farsa and Kadita. Although she is also a decent Hanzo, Uranus and Sicilian player. And last for today, we have Destroyer 2 MLBB. Who wants me to create a little personal profile. How old are you? I'm 28 years old. Born on the 9th June 1993. Where are you from? I'm from the most beautiful city in the world, Hamburg in Germany. Why did you play Mobile Legends? As I said before, because of my lovely wife. And what is your favorite food? Everything my wife is cooking. Well honestly, I can't really say I have one favorite food. Because I love eating almost everything. As long as it doesn't contain any peanuts. Because then I will die. Like legit. I'm super allergic against this little shits. Now, go and check out my new Patreon. It would be really awesome if we could make this work together. If you join any level, see you over there. Have a great day.